Follow us on Twitter at 90s Percentile. And if you'd like more content from Wee Studios, check us out at weepodcast.com, W-E-E podcast.com, where you can find our Simpsons podcast, Worst Episode Ever, and our movie commentary series, Sync Points. And if you want to support the show, you can help us out by clicking our Amazon links. That's at weepodcast.com. You click the links and shop like you normally would, and we get a small percentage. Thanks, guys. on the clock and straight out of Wii Studios, this is 90s Percentile. My name is Dan. My name is Jack, and we're talking everything 90s and maybe everything before and after. And today we are joined in studio by a guest, Bryce Bishop Pullen. What was that? That was awesome. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Keep it in. Hey guys. Bryce Bishop Pullen, our guest today, TV editor extraordinaire. How are you doing, Bryce? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Very good. All right, very, Bryce very is going to join us uh, for our first topic, which is this show, 90 yes. Percentile. What are you listening to? What is this? What is this show? This is the last time. Who are these voices? Yeah. You've probably gotten sick of this by now, depending on where this episode runs. This is our last test show. We're still just. <laughs> but it might be our first episode. It might be we our don't first know. episode. We're just trying to bang out the format. Uh, before we really get going. This is actually a week before we're going to launch. It's kind of exciting. Uh, but what are we doing here? Uh, we've got a list of random topics about the 1990s from specific to broad that you guys have submitted. Submitted by you, the listener. And if you want to submit one, uh, we'll tell you at the end of the show, there's a, a nice little website Dan's a, made. Yep, it's wepodcast.com you can go to to find... The 90s percentile website. Yeah, and Dan, wepodcast.com. Dan's going to pull a topic, and we're just going to talk about it, maybe give you a little background info, but we're just going to let the conversation go wherever we, wherever it's going to go. Right, and we, you can, we want you to submit 90s topics. That's what we're talking about, and if we get taken to other places, that's yeah. fine, too. And unlike our Simpsons podcast, Worst Episode Ever, if you check that out, uh, where our philosophy is cut all this because we, uh, we go on for hours, uh, this is live to tape. We, uh, we have a giant timer. It's Right now it's yes. at 5831. Uh, and we are just going to talk without cutting. There's no cutting. No uh, cuts. And uh, mm. it's just, it's on us to, to, to keep it entertaining. We're nothing but rock and paper. No <laughs> scissors in this podcast. Hey, I, I got you. Yeah, you're, okay, we all, all right. understand so, what I'm saying. So why don't we do our first 90s topic of the show? All right, Jack, let's do it. I'm hitting the old bag, and we got Trapper, <laughs> trapper Keeper <laughs> Binders. <laughs> trapper Keeper trapper Binders, keeper suggested binders. by Lynn Sokolow. Damn. All right. Um, Boy, so that remember. takes me back oh, to the 90s. Yes. They were neon, and they kept all of my trappings and, and such. Uh, no, I, if you're too young to remember the Trapper Keeper, or old enough to forget the Trapper Keeper, <laughs> uh, they were basically a three-ring binder that was kind of like an organizer for students. Uh, they had these kind of tripped-out designs Yeah, on see, the front. to me, that's really, besides being maybe somewhat of a deluxe version of a binder, it might have had a few extra folders on the inside covers, to me, it was really just more about the geometric designs on the on the yeah, cover right. Yeah, else. it was a very '90s like yeah, the very geometric. If you think, uh, like if you've ever seen Sa- like so, like spheres, well, and if, you've, things. if you've ever seen like Saved by the Bell, <laughs> yeah, the the intro to Saved by the Bell, when, that when kind the, of when jagged. When the bell goes off and all the shapes like yeah, come together. all the shapes. That was very that, that trapper was, keeper. That was the that was the front of a trapper keeper was the the beginning of Saved by the Bell, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and it had like a Velcro piece to keep it. It, it was a three ring binder that was also like folded over had a had a little tab that. You could Velcro closed. Right, that was the kind of the big selling point for the Trapper Keeper. I think that, that was the you're right. That piece. was the big selling yeah, point. Yeah, you're right. That, that was the, the Velcro thing that closed over. That was um, like their their IP right there. Yeah, yeah that was like you know. Well, I iPod, remember the iPad had a touch screen. This had a piece of Velcro. <laughs> well, I remember like when you were when you, when you were a kid and you were in elementary or early middle school. And uh, you had a, a binder that didn't close like that, and you had papers going everywhere, and everyone would laugh at you and be like, well, you don't have a trapper keeper, and then they'd beat you, you up. You nerd. Um, yeah. and, then, I, and, and I remember that was everybody. That the, 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 yeah, that is the only reason <laughs> the, I ever wanted it is because stuff kept falling out of my, out of my binder. Yeah. Um, I had a, I, it was I, the main selling point, I, I think. I had a five-star yeah. later on, either in high school or college, uh, the five-star binder. That had the zipper. I thought that was much more. I, I, I guess zippers. Out, no way. Out of the trapper keeper. Holy but, but shit. Velcro rules. <laughs> uh, here's what I want to talk about. So you were. Talk- That's two two thousands for me, the, frankly. Uh, the, uh, the geometric designs and stuff, uh, <clears throat> on a grand historical scale, like you know, nothing happens in a vacuum. Why did that quintessential well, '90s vacuuming? Happens in a vacuum. Vacuum happens in a vacuum. Why did that quintessential '90s um, design geometric design happen? Here's one theory I have. Um, Basically, computer, the way computer CGI was in the 80s, was basically all geometric lines. Yeah. And, and, uh, what's yeah, it, right. it called? Iso, isomorphs? Iso, Iso, isohedron. Uh, uh, isohedral? I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever they are. But, the, iso, uh, the isotopes. So somehow maybe that actually... Well, to me, it always, it always felt in. like a weird like progression of like sort of art deco uh, 
accents to things where you know there was there was it was it was all like very geometric shapes but now they were like cool colors and well, exciting see, this is what well, i say usually when something happens like a new form of art or something it's in response to the previous so what right. was what geometric was tra- designs a response to well if, if okay, wikipedia so he, is to be believed the trapper which keeper is. which it always is the trapper keeper designer series started in 1988 and uh that was when they started featuring the abstract designs and the oh. later on computer generated imagery so i'm thinking maybe, so that was i don't know maybe so before I think, yeah i think before. the original trapper keepers were just like boring colors like, yeah you want some boring ass color on your fucking paper or do you want a bunch of flying triangles and squiggly doos well to me it, it it harkens back to like mtv colorizing like the moon landing like that's the sort of like oh it's all black and white but now it's like color now and the shapes everywhere face, bro. <laughs> look at this neon fucking square so you said the designer series started in 1988 I'm thinking this was more a response to Reaganomics. And so, like, could be. clearly, could, yeah. clearly, could yeah. be. you know, it's just like everybody, just America found itself after trickle down economics and stuff yeah. like that. They just kind of found themselves mm. lost and, the, and they're just like floating in the sea of cones and spheres and cubes. Yes. I think that's what Trapper that's really, was going That's really for. deep. Yeah. And if you wanted yeah. to organize all of your foreclosure and like debt <laughs> agreements, you could get a trap. You could or, do that. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, air tower controller, yeah. and you were out of work. Ronald Reagan actually used trapper keepers in the Oval Office yeah. to keep track to of keep, his, well, to, to keep, keep track, track of all of his, his wells. astrological <laughs> stuff. Actually, Ronald Reagan owned a series of wells all along the Eastern Seaboard, <laughs> and he used he, a trapper keeper yeah, to keep all of the deeds for his wells. Yeah, Excel wasn't really a big thing yet. Yeah. No, that no. makes sense. Um, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia. Uh, so trapper keepers still around? That's kind of surprising. I think they were gone for a while, and then they they've Nostal- come back 90s, recently. That, that awful trend of 90s yeah, nostalgia. 90s nostalgia, where everyone's trying to cash in on people talking about the 90s. Unbelievable. Check out Jock.com, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it looks like for the 2015 school season, Trapper Keeper introduced Star Wars and Hello Kitty. Uh, so now it looks like, you know, Trapper Keeper used to be its own brand, and now now it's kind of just relying on uh, well, I don't know. I bigger think, properties. I don't know if that's always true. I, 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 I'm trying to remember the Trapper Keepers that I have had in my life. I don't think any of them had, like, cartoon car- characters no, or, like, Power Rangers shape. or things. I only I definitely had one, a shape one. I owned one Trapper Keeper my entire... I always just had generic, uh, like, vinyl staples binders or whatever yeah. i only owned the one i can't remember what time period it was uh but it was like it was purple it had, it had little shapes and stuff um what i didn't like about it was it was like a one or two inch ring i prefer the, the bigger binders like if you're gonna get a binder mm-hmm. you go all out right um so am i did you guys ever get excited about going school shopping am i that big of yeah. a nerd no like, i think I, everybody um, did like all right you know well, like, right, you know, you know it's how, bittersweet well you know how you go into a comic book store or a toy store and you uh, just don't know yeah what, i know yeah. all about going into comic book stores <laughs> and, like you don't know what to buy like, you, you know you're just like excited you just want to get everything yeah do you, i get that feeling every time i go into a staples i get that feeling also and i buy everything and that is why i am <laughs> completely weird, poor you live in a cardboard box full of office supplies yes. <laughs> staples box from from staples I know, I really well ironically i'm able to open my own staples yeah. and I've actually made some money that way but all, continue all of your furniture is legal <laughs> yeah, boxes that's right legal no, I just, boxes I really have like a fetish like I really like nerd out on, on like just cool like th- th- especially the stuff you really don't need like the, those yeah, yeah. I, well I think like I a, think there's an aspect of like a T-square which you don't new, you wouldn't need yeah, as a yeah. non-architect or those reinforcement holes I have like thousands of them even though they don't work and I never oh, use I, them I, I hate new those perfect yeah. it's sort of there's a new clean perfect everything you yeah, need a new sharp sharpie and like a and like you know all new pencils and new folders and like everything's clean and it's like i i think there's probably also i'm gonna say jack i feel like (laughs) jack was one of those kids who was like oh this is gonna be my year this is gonna be the year of jack (laughs) this is gonna be the and then you know that's that's why he'd he'd be so happy with the new stuff and then you know i'm sure as dan can attest to 10 minutes into day one of school jack was like Never mind that I was wrong, My, and his folders were all crumpled, well, and then so you, so that at the end of the year it was it was terrible. Like when- school let out. When you had your Hello Kitty Trapper Keeper <laughs> in our junior year of high school, and you're like, "This is gonna be my year," and it, it, it was not. Well, no, it's, it's funny not. you said because the fir- very first day of high school, that was a big one for me. Because again, it's a, besides it being high school, you know, it's a new school. Uh, not a lot of people know me. There's just mm. like a minority of yeah. classmates. So, so this that was the first a lot of day minority we met. Classmates. Yeah, that's a great day we met. That, that's a great time to reinvent yourself. And I, 
remember we were sitting in the bleachers either for gym or it was in the gym or maybe it was for orientation. I don't know what, but one of the quote unquote cool kids who was really just an obnoxious asshole. Uh, he was Please talking, tell me off air who yeah, we're talking about. And, yeah. and he was talking to another one of them. It was me. And oh, was that's right. Bryce. We went to high school with Bryce and right. Bryce is a Just for that one day though. And uh, so he was, he, was, he was talking to this other kid and they were like, yeah, yeah, we got to find some nerd who, uh, who will do a homework for us. And he turns to me, I'm a few bleachers down and, they, and he goes, hey, you, you. Uh, he goes, uh, you, uh, you do homework? You do homework a lot? Like, like, he said something like that. And I, I still remember, you do homework? So I still remember, I like turned and looked up and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Homework's for nerds. <laughs> and I just remember, I was like so desperate to, to, to find myself as someone who, who's too yeah. cool for homework. I loved homework. It's all I have. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, By the way, you can tell that because Jack still posts his homework. That's true, you do. On, oh, his, yeah, on that Facebook Check out my blog, use it in a sentence, slash Facebook or whatever it is. Just Google use it in a sentence. Uh, yeah, my blog of my spelling homework from 1992. Um, He's although... still got it. <laughs> he still got it. This guy fucking loves homework. Right? It's, it's, it's what I do. Well, maybe we'll start assigning a homework to you, not the listeners. Well... Podcast listeners send in homework <laughs> suggestions for Jack. For Jack, give me some spelling words, yeah, some we'll, vocabulary, we'll do some pencil. Well, I mean, the big Five part of it, essay. I guess, besides me just like having a thirst for knowledge, I think a big part of it was I just didn't have friends or anything. I lived in one of those. I lived in a neighborhood. You're that, really painting a picture of yourself as a young man, well, Jack. It kind of sucked because I lived in a neighborhood that didn't have a ton of kids my age on the block, and that mm-hmm. really made all the difference. I remember almost everybody from my school lived in this like very specific cul-de-sac called Tanglewood, where everybody lived on the same more or less street. It was like a series of streets. But they all lived in that like enclave. Right, and they all hung out together. Yeah, exactly. They would see each other. They'd all get in the same bus. I didn't have that, and right. my mom and dad, for different reasons, I guess because they worked, weren't social either, so I didn't have like play dates. And we, it's very telling that when I got the internet in high school, like mm-hmm. sophomore year, yep. and I started talking online to you and other people going in chat rooms, that's yeah. when I like, well, like when I stopped doing my homework and I stopped yeah. my grades started. I finally have an outlet that isn't I, homework. I just had something to do. Yeah. I just had something yeah, yeah, yeah. to do. That's what we were all, you know, the 90s was a crazy time. The internet was something to do. We all needed, <laughs> we had too much time on our hands and now we don't have enough. <laughs> it's, it's, it's we got all these podcasts way, yeah. and Reddits and whatnots. I just, I was talking Pornography about, is everywhere. I was, ev- I was talking to, uh, Everywhere. I was talking everywhere. To, <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of fetishes, hey, I've got one for pornography. <laughs> I was talking to a friend of you Wii too? Studios, Jeff, yesterday. Check out our Last subreddit. Last night, I was talking oh, yeah. to Pornography a friend of Wii Studios, Jeff. And he, Underscore we, talking he's over been Jeff. adamant about how he doesn't want to, uh, he's, he's against the self-driving movement because he's very into driving. He drives stick. He just, he mm. loves the act of driving. Yeah. And I was talking to him about how that's going to change. Like they'll, you know, it's not for a while that self-driving will completely take over. Right. But you know, the generation of people who grew up driving and are attached to driving, they will be gone. I was like, look, do you really think you know, there are probably people who are like, you know, I really love my horse. I'm not going to use this horseless carriage. I love riding my horse. You know, they die out eventually. Uh, so are you suggesting there's going to be like car stables or like car ranches no, no, no. where you'll so drive cars? Are you, podcast, are you are you saying this, that they're going to? This podcast I, I was listening to. This podcast I was listening to was a, uh, they brought up a very good point about how basically kids now. This is not us. We basically when we grew up in the back seat. I don't know if you did this, but you would pretend there was a steering wheel and you would like hit the blinkers and you would make a left when your mom made a left. Whereas kids now have. Sp- you know, we had Game Boys, but it wasn't the same. They have smartphones. They have uh, yeah. They're all advanced. distracted. They're very playing easy. the video games. So when they turn eighteen and it's time for them to get a license, it's they will want to just to them it won't be a big you know to them it'll be like yeah I'll just get in the back of an Uber or a self driving car and do what I've always done. They, they it's like right where so my point I guess is is basically when we went home and went on the internet. That kind of change, it, it just, it really does fundamentally change your way of life. Because now what oh, you absolutely. do is when you get home or when you're, you're always on the internet now because yeah. you have a smartphone, whereas the generation before. I have before, a brain implant. I'm, like, yeah. I got Twitter it, right so to my it's eye. Just, it's funny how this stuff kind of just does change you fundamentally. Yeah. I want to go back to what you just said about the self-driving cars, though, because you made a like, once there are self-driving cars, there's not going to be any non-self-driving cars, I think, uh, ultimately. Eventually. Once, once, eventually, when that's all panned out. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, much like horses, it's going to be this like niche thing where you can oh, go totally. to a ranch totally. and drive a car. Well, the oh, same... there's still going to be like racing. 
like car NASCAR is still going to be a thing. It's going to be yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a thing that you want to do because you like it. Just like horseback riding, which is not a thing I want to do. I have done it. (laughs) Riding on a horse. Yeah, I rode on a camel a few months ago at at Renaissance Fair. It was the most pain my (laughs) testicles have ever felt. The camel, the traditional animal of the Renaissance. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) They were caravans. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, um, Leonardo Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo 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 da Vinci was riding a camel everywhere. Leonardo Leonardo DiCaprio. He was was wrestling a bear. Was also also riding a camel everywhere. (laughs) Uh, Revenant Two. Leo versus Camel. Hump's in, in back. Hump's back. <laughs> I assume there's a character named Hump in the first room. And he's back. And he's, he's back. back. And he's a camel now for some reason. He had a really big part. They didn't. They didn't call him by name. But no, like, you'll, you'll, you have to see you'll the recognize. Credits. Yeah, you have to. You he's have to credited watch. as Hump, but yeah. he's he's just a hunchback. It explains why uh, when he di- when he is in that one scene in the background, you heard Hump Hump Hump, hump it up. That's his catchphrase. <laughs> well, he was always singing like the Humpty Dance, but they couldn't they couldn't pay for the rights because they had already blown yeah, the rest the of the budget. Bad CGI. Yeah. So it's yeah. like a weird. So it was just, a weird, like not really the Humpty hump dance. It up. Yeah, <laughs> there's lots of different hump songs going on here. Hump songs. There are. Um, pumps in a bump. Yeah, yeah, no, horse, pump yeah and cars will be around, but they will be. It'll be a niche thing, uh, for sure. Uh, I'm yeah. excited. I can't wait because I hate driving. I don't like driving. I, I like driving, but you know, we're, would, we're in New York where we do not drive. Yeah, we take this I mean, subway everywhere. My girlfriend owns a car. Uh, and owns it. She she just made her final payment like a few weeks ago, and it's amazing how that's like a huge thing. Like just mm-hmm. to make your final payment on a yeah. car is like worthy of like going out for drinks. Um, and I feel bad that you know if we do drive somewhere, she has to drive me around. I'm literally if you listen to the the uh, lyrics in TLC's No Scrubs, <laughs> every single line fits me perfectly. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, so um, if anyway, talking I, 90s. So once no we have scrubs. once we have a self driving car, I can drive her around. Yeah, I'll, I'll be like, come on, I'll pick you up, babe. Well, technically, the car will just drive you around. Yeah, You'll but do nothing. I'll hit the button. Right. <laughs> I don't know when or this will, episode. Or will you? Will you just be like, I just don't. Well, we'll I, can't, ha- I can't. I don't want to hit the button. Can you hit the button? We'll have robots to press the button for us. Well, and they'll be connected to our brains. Here's, I will tell here's the, the robot question. To hit the button. Even if there are self driving cars, will you need to still have a driver's license? Probably. Will not. it have a wheel? Will you be able to operate the, the will, vehicle will manual? Take a, take and you, in theory, you'd. Ha- I'd say you'd probably have to in case something ever went wrong, like right. or some or a com- computer crash or anything like that. Like anything happens, you're going to want to be able to take over. That's and, a good point. And therefore, you're still going to need to have a license. I have a couple of points I want to make. First is I I don't know when this episode is going to air, what order it is, but it's like the seventh or eighth. It's actually going to air in 2050 when self-driving cars are everywhere. We okay. all sound like idiots. But I feel like we have talked about self-driving cars in. Most of the episodes we've recorded it's today, because it's honestly it keeps one of coming the up. Oh, God. Topics so this is topic. going to be right, the self-driving car then. podcast. It's just such a cool fucking welcome, concept. Welcome to self-drive cast. I just can't wait. I'm so excited. It welcome to drive cast. But, but based on what Bryce was just saying, I don't know if you'll be able to take control of the car because let's think about it like the purpose. it defeats the purpose because like how would you how would that work? Like, would it become unlocked if something is wrong? Because otherwise you'd have I, jerks, like, well, just it, taking control of the car. In theory, there'd be, like, some kind them. of emergency shutoff. There will um, be that no matter what. But as yeah. for we, I think the first few generations of self-driving cars, especially when they're, they're not share, when they are sharing the road with uh, non-autonomous vehicles, there will definitely be a wheel and there'll be stuff like that. I think right. it'll, it's a generation thing. You grow up with that and then you're more, oh, then you're okay with no steering wheel. Okay, so but, it's, but, it evolves. but, but let, me, let me point out that, like, computers still crash. We've had computers for computers a very long time. They yeah. still crash. Well, but less than they used to. No, no, no. Sure, but but there has to be a way and for you to get... A computer crashing is much different but, than a car crash. No, no, no. But, but, but I'm saying the cars are run by computers. Th- well, there can true. be a yes. problem that happens in the car, and if the... If the car isn't going to dr- be able to drive itself, let's say let's say there's some weird oh, glitch that happens over, where the yeah, car right. keeps like breaking every right. every like five feet, or you, car, you yeah. still need to drive home from work. Or another car will come get you because uh, we don't know how the model's going to work That's so true. early. But one of yes. the prevailing theories is that auton- once we have self-driving cars, we won't even own them. I mean, some people might. Again, well, who knows? But it'll That's be what more I was going to say. Ford just like signed on to do a, a like. Fleet. I I feel like one at one point I don't know how this is going to work logistically, but there will just be cars just going constantly on well, the streets, you and watch, you just get an empty self driving car. Yeah, if you watch exactly, if you watch like Fifth Element or Revenge of the Sith, and they have the the futuristic model. I've watched both of them. If you have the futuristic model of the three D highways, uh, where there's lots of cars zooming past, and whenever you would think that, you would be like, whenever you would see that, you would go, that's that's stretching it because. 
it's too dangerous. How are you driving at such high speeds with so much going on? If, but right. now that now that computers are doing the driving, that's actually very realistic. Yeah. Because they can handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the theories I heard, at least at first, is that uh, cars are uh, self-driving cars probably won't go over thirty-five miles per hour. Just uh, really, you, you'll you'll still but get. I want to go fast. You're still going to get to where you're going faster because every car will be inches from each other. They're they're using more road <laughs> space, but mm -hmm. they're going to go slower because a. Uh, you still have the idea, like, what if a dog jumps in front of the road? Where do you turn? The morality issues that we yeah. have talked about. Yeah. On yes, we've yeah. definitely talked about that. Oh, that's um, right. I've heard. I've heard this. But yeah, yeah, yeah so. it, you have to. But if you're going so slow that even if there is an accident, it's not going to be fatal. The worst. Yeah. So there's a theory that at least at first, the first few generations will go relatively slow. Also, if a computer crashes, I'd like to think. I know this isn't 100 percent certain. I'd like to think that means the car stops. It doesn't go must kill all humans yeah. and just starts like veering off. Hey man, and aiming you. For you Clearly, well, you're not watching enough science fiction movies. Yeah, once Skynet is awakened, yeah, all of the self-driving cars, over. they will turn into transformers. You, you clearly have not seen us. Maximum Overdrive. I, I love Maximum Overdrive. It's a great movie. Uh, I don't know if I would say it's a great movie, but no, I do. No, I, 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 I do love Stephen King. Say it's I'm not saying the computer going down is going to make your car like ram into a wall. I'm saying the computer going down is right. going to make your car stop, you're and then you still have to get home. Now you're stranded. But now you're stranded in the highway. Another car will just come get you. If your Uber, well, you if, say your, that. if your Uber driver tries to rape you, you just get out and get another Uber. Um, that's not been my experience <laughs> with yeah, raping Uber know. drivers. You might call the police. There might be something happening in between. But eventually, you're going to get another Uber going. Jack, I'm concerned well, about I guess how your this Uber experience is well, this been is, going. Well, this is the question. If it's a fleet, then yes. But if, if, if it's, it's not, not a fleet, fleet yeah. then no. See, that's the problem with all this conjecture is, uh, <laughs> and uh, the guy on the same podcast, uh, I love recapping sci-fi, by the way. Yes, Science Friday you do. Podcast. But this, this, this guy on the same podcast basically made a great point. He goes, look. Um, whatever we think is going to happen, whatever looks like it's going to happen, like self-driving cars, it's going to take longer than we think. But whatever we don't see coming is going to come and suddenly take over everything in a year. And like, change the world mm -hmm. real quick. Basically like Uber. Like, Nobody like, saw Uber coming, and then it did. Nobody saw smartphones smart coming. Smartphones is what I was yeah. going to say, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's very early to be kind of predicting. We, we have a loose idea of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it'll there'll probably be answers for these questions. Yeah, um, that's interesting. It's also interesting that this is a show that's supposed to be about the 90s, but we always seem to talk about what's going to happen uh, in the future. I specifically Slash said at the top of the show. Self-driving cars. Oh, I know. Everything but we always after. seem to talk about yeah. like dystopian futures and, and things of that you nature. You would think that this show is catered to nerds well, who like the... science fiction and pop culture. I would like to point out that you've never specified the 1990s. Yeah. Ah, so, so, the 2090s. The 2090s. Yep. Um, no, so, or the so, 1890s. So when I, the self-driving buggy was prevalent. To bring it back, I, to bring it back, I would say that um, I think I I'm excited for the trapper keeper of self-driving cars because right. I'm assuming once self-driving cars become a, a thing, car with Velcro, they're going to go through styles. You know, just like how fifth cars in the '50s with tail fins mm -hmm. and stuff look mm -hmm. totally different from cars now. Yeah. Are you suggesting cars 30 years ago abstract shapes cars? So uh, who knows? Like, what's going to happen once once aerodynamics don't come into play and and just a basic upkeep? Like, yeah. who knows? Like, so I, I bet you there'll be a decade where there's like geometric trapper keeper cars. Guys, I got be, it. There'll be ones where they all look like spheres. I've got it. The opening to Save by the Bell is actually an image of the future, and those squiggles flying around are self-driving cars self -driving and buses. Cars, yeah. They're all the different self-driving cars. They're all you're going to have the isosceles triangle. Yeah. You're going to have and the, the pink squiggly there's line. There's going to be a Zach Morris face There's going to be no, there's gonna be no go, radios. The only, the only sound you can get in the car is the theme to Save by the Bell. <laughs> yeah. Which will become the national anthem. Which, which, and, and, and drive everyone to kill themselves. I don't think I'll ever make it on time. Kids won't understand what that means. Because yeah. they're like, oh, I just have my self-driving squiggle car. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of Demolition Man, where they just listen to commercial jingles in the car for some reason. <laughs> That's the only thing you have time for. Three seashells, We're going to be man. getting there so fast. <laughs> He does not use three so, all right, so let's extrapolate. So again, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen because there's so many variables that we don't we can't but, even see but, coming. But, but this if, is 100 percent accurate, and we know exactly. But, what's if, but happen. if you are, We've, well, I have been to the future. So, so if I do you're know. in a self-driving car, say an hour for a commute, an hour a day, uh, an hour hour each way. Um, what things could you, are they going to add bathrooms? Like, are they going to add some kind Probably. of piss pot? Are they? Yeah. Gonna, or. Here's what's gonna happen. We're all gonna be start wearing diapers, mm -hmm. and eventually we're gonna get to Wally, where we just have our own self driving things, and we don't all have right, to well, move. Well, this, you know, but what about the? Then we might as well just go to the Matrix and just live in a in a reality in a, well. in a in a. Projected yeah, I reality. Mean, I, honestly, Go to simulation. We're not already in the if matrix, yeah. my if friend. If Oculus becomes a big thing, then you could just be sitting in your back seat and being like, "I want to go to the jungle." They said like a big VR application will be soldiers. Like if you're uh -huh. in the middle of Afghanistan in the middle of the desert and you got nothing to do on your downtime, uh, a great way would be to put on your helmet and just go to the fucking beach. You know. Huh. 
That's so, interesting. So maybe we'll be doing that in the backseat of our cars. Well, because we're not going to be fighting in any wars. We'll we'll be in the backseat of our cars. Right. The three of us. Exactly. The three of us. No, we no. We're, we'll be long dead. Yeah, yeah. Even in like 2020, <laughs> we'll be long dead. Yeah, we're not long for this world. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't know. Like you know, right now a big thing in New York City is the, these micro apartments that are 300 square feet and everything's uh, back. Maybe if you have self-driving cars constantly driving on the road, just always moving, maybe people will just move into their cars. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's, just, that's true. Yeah, yeah I mean. Well, that's the you that's the thing. Bed, is like, you, kitchen, are they going to have a ch- check in check out system, or could you just have a have a tab that like lets you get into the car and drives to wherever you want for a flat fee, like for a flat monthly fee, and then you just like live in the subway. Basically, if it's cheaper yeah. to do that. That's yeah. basically the. So we're talking about the subway living, here, like subway homeless living people, in the subway. It's yeah, more private. You have right, to right. Privacy. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, that's kind of depending on how expensive it is. I could see like this culture. Of people who just live in cars, you don't but even. But then need, that would be like, like the downfall. Culture. But you don't, yeah, you don't even need bathrooms in the car because if you're always in a car, you could just go to the gas. You know, you know where the good Starbucks bathroom is, and you just when you're ready right. when you have to pee, you just drive there. You could be driving around the same block over and over, especially if you got the VR thing where you don't get sick of your surroundings. Who's paying for the self-driving cars? Yeah. Who's no, paying for what, the gas? What I'm saying is, or the I electricity guess the kids, or whatever. There's no gas. It's it's they're all we cold fusion. We we figured out cold fusion. Cold fusion is we're, okay. With yeah. cold fusion's been figured out. I, yeah. What I'm saying is I guess if if it turns out especially the way rent prices are going for it to be cheaper to just be constantly in your car yeah. than to pay rent in an apartment you do know that people live in their cars now right exactly in their cars exactly yeah so uh, i could see this like it would just be it's kind of weird to see this actually happening this sure. my point is there's lots of weird self-driving car things that are obvious if you think about it but we're not thinking about it right you got to you got to think down the road a little bit or, or no, just no pun intended. And be very pessimistic. Yeah, and just think about homeless people. Yeah. And... So that's Trapper Keepers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I we think we covered move, everything we for Trapper Keepers. Are we ready to move on to our next topic? Yeah, yeah let's, let's take another topic. All, All right, we so we're going to take another topic right now, and we have things labeled alt. Ah. Things labeled news alt. News groups. We, we actually t- uh, talked about this on... Um, alt. Uh, I think on another show we did. Yeah, we briefly just talked about the alt button for five seconds, and then we were out yes, of time. Yes, you're right. Um, Should we talk a little bit more let's, in let's depth? Let's talk about something specific. We, we want specific topics. What does this actually uh, mean? Alt meaning alternative? I'm right? guessing that's what it means, especially... Alternative. Like in the alternative. 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 Alternative rock was kind of like what the mainstream yeah. music was. That's the first was. thing that came to my head. What, else, what other 90s alternatives? I don't know. New, news groups with, uh, like... Alt, alt dot, dot binary dot, dot alt dot yeah alt dot nerd dot, nerd dot, dot obsessive, obsessive. Yeah. yeah like was that's it let's talk about news, news was groups. alta vista was that alt that was a was, 90s. It, was alta about some is alta the, well the it has alt is something so different I, I, yeah. I, no I i'm know. saying what was alta what did alta vista mean i have no, no. idea it was the Vista, but it was also Alta Vista. Well, we'll just sound like idiots, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that not what the show is? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Was, I, it would be nice if I'm not sure if I'm going to judge uh, intelligence based on knowing what Alta Vista means. <laughs> I would like That's to know the new means. Mensa uh, yeah. test. Can you, to, can you can you identify? Tell me what Alta Vista four, means. Four like dis, like totally gone like search engines. Yeah, you, know, you got to you got to be able to you name like four. You got Dogpile. Uh, you got Lycos. Lycos. Web crawler. Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. I'm just kind of bummed and all that we're all in Mensa. I, I'm just kind right of bummed now. that when, right. like, like my, that my teachers easy. didn't give me homework when I was in third grade. Like, like what is the English translation of Alta? What is the root of Alta Vista? Because if, if you they, really you liked really homework, liked homework well, Jack. I, I, if I had done my homework, Dan, I got to tell you, this homework. is this does not you knowing you becoming friends with him so early does not reflect well on you. These stories. <laughs> well, I was pretty alt in the '90s. You know how it was. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, alt was like. Yeah, well, I, I, the first thing that came to my head was was news groups and and like okay, early internet. But but like yeah, alt rock clearly. Well, let's okay, so let's talk let's about talk alt, alt. alternative <laughs> rock for, yeah. so for all is that, purposes. So let's say that's what alt, rock alt means. To me means grunge, Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. it was basically like I know I'm rock not, riffs, I'm not a music but not expert. classic rock. I feel like a music expert would just tear me apart for saying that. They probably would, but like um, new wave and hair metal and stuff that was popular in the '80s, kind of carried in a little bit into the '90s, and then kind of grunge and Nirvana and everything came out, and that was kind of alt. Yeah. But it was always weird to me is that it was still called alternative even when it was like mainstream the de- it was music. The like Nirvana yeah. was like the biggest band and around. Now it's considered pretty much just rock and roll of the 1990s. That's cool. where rock and roll was in the '90s. Yeah. Now it's considered classic rock, well, and they're yeah, playing Nirvana too, yeah. on the classic rock stations. This I think that, we've also talked yeah, about that too. But it, yeah, it's funny. <coughs> well, I guess maybe maybe that's just how society works is everything alt, or not everything alt, but something everything mainstream started off as alt. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think you're well, right. I, think, I mean I think it was just a well, it was I, it was it was a it was probably just a uh 
like commodifying uh, marketing term. Like oh, definitely. this is this is new rock. It's yeah. alternative, yeah. and it was underground underground rock like grunge. Actually, you know what? I bet it, it does relate to. Um... Oh, but you know what? They, they used to also call like I remember like Green Day was labeled like alt rock, right? And Green Day is like. You know, pop punk. I mean, that's what, that's pretty, what, what yeah. I was to say. Is basically anything rock and roll. Well, here, what's what's not alt rock and roll in the 1990s? Well, here's my right. point. Everything everything that was new in the 1990s was alt rock. Calling basically. everything alt and alternative, uh, I think it's because, especially in the 90s, the 80s in the 90s, teenagers had more money, and mm-hmm. teenagers are who businesses go after, and they teenagers are all countercultural, and they're like, I'm going to rebel from my parents. So calling something alt alternative. Is saying to like teenagers like ah this isn't your dad's boring old rock music this is Nevada yeah no that's no no no, that's a good point and I'm thinking why why besides them having more money why is teenagers having more power and I'm guessing it has a lot to do with TV because say you're in the 40s or the 50s teenage culture doesn't really affect adult culture because it's just kind of happening uh, you know at the at the sock hop with their make out parties and their drag races but once you are catering to them (laughs) and making and trying to get money off of them uh, so now there's going to be a lot more stuff on TV like MTV and stuff like that there's going to be a lot more stuff on TV catering to those kids Mm -hmm. because they're the ones spending the money and you kind of have no choice especially in the 80s when there's four channels three channels you kind of have you know adults are going to see more stuff catered to the younger audience than they want to whereas in their previous generations before tv you could kind of avoid it does that mean is that i'm just spitballing here. i don't know if that's their case that makes sense i we, mean we talked about earlier i don't know if it was on our simpson show if it was on one of these uh but we talked about how now they're already starting to cater to the post-millennial generation whatever if we're gen y this would be gen z or whatever um the the kids that are that grew up even with smartphones if if millennials right. people like us and a little older and a little younger are generally categorized as the generation that grew up with the internet uh and we didn't quite grow up with it we had it well, in high school i think it's a weird we had it in, but yeah it's, it's, it's a, a it, depend, it depends on how Millen- early you had it people the, the people had it in like lumped in a lot of yeah, exactly. very disparate groups that being said the cons- the general uh, con- consensus is the post millennial ger- generation the ones that are just starting to enter uh those late teen years are the ones that grew up with smartphones uh, and they speak in emoji. They use emoji. Like Instagram is something like 55% of comments are in emoji. I don't understand emoji. I can't translate them when right. I see them. So I, anyway, I, like I, just saw, I just saw a Deadpool ad yeah. that was just emoji. Yeah. It was a dead oh, and yeah. a poo and an L. I don't know. <laughs> but it was Deadpool. And anyway, I, would, so I like just, Deadpool, but I would rather see Deadpool. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, just my, me, maybe. My point is we're just starting to see the beginning of ads that are not catered to us. They're catered to, the, to younger people. Uh, well, I don't know about. I don't know if that's true. I feel I, like I, think, I still understand those. I feel like. I mean, I, I feel like enough of us still, enough people our age still use yeah, emojis. We're and with it enough. Yeah. Well, no, we're at the very head of it, but it's going to get. It's going to get worse as we get older. But sure. Also, oh, absolutely. But also, I think uh, they've been advertising to people younger than us for a long time. I mean, yeah. we're we're all early thirties. I mean, there's advertisements, but I, for like, if you're going to watch a little kid show, there's advertisements for the little kid show. But I'm saying they're aiming like they're now the bigger. You know, eight, we're still in that big eighteen to forty nine group. But the 18 right. to 25 group is even more important to, to a lot yeah. of Yeah, oh, definitely. And I don't think they've been catered. Are they watching little kids' shows? I don't think, well, I'm saying is we were, you know, for more or less, even though we're a little bit older, we were in that 18 to 25 group up until very recently. Right. I think now there's a, and even, even when we were past that, there were people younger who were still in that group that are more or less millennials. We can relate to, we can relate to 26, 27 year olds a lot more than we can relate to 23, 22 uh, eighteen year olds. It, it it progressively gets get it, the, it's well, a sharp arc. Yeah. So I think we're just now getting. This is the you know well all right. So the iPhone came out in two thousand seven. Uh, that was nine years ago. Yeah. So oh, man, for you to old. grow up with an iPhone, for you to be somewhat of an adult, let's say twelve <coughs> years old, and this is conservative, and this is a very general. So if you were twelve in two thousand seven, uh-huh. you would be twenty one now. That's an yeah. adult. So now you're mm-hmm. having adults, people who graduated but college. But if you're 12 had, when the iPhone comes out, you still remember like life before the iPhone. Yeah, but it does. It didn't affect the way you socialize because no matter what was out before you right, were 12, it, you were still doing whatever your parents were doing. I think you need to go a little bit uh, more recent than that no, because was, 12. Look, when, when the iPhone came out, not everybody had it. It was very for right. a while. It was only 18. But I didn't get the internet until mm-hmm. I was 15, 16. 
Uh, so I lived an entire life, an entire childhood without the internet. But right. basically, I'm still defined by having the internet because I, I, when See, I but was that's finding, what I don't agree with with this millennial, like as a term, because because people born in 1980 definitely are not in that group, yeah. and they are considered millennials. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like my brother was born in 1980. But he's influ- he was close enough to our generation, or we were even close enough to the people a little bit younger than us, that they're def- they're they're defined by that. That basically their lifestyles. Yeah. You know, he he didn't grow up with email, but he had to learn how to use email to go to work. Right. Whereas, like, so you're saying we're gonna have to learn how to use emojis. emoji to go to work. Uh, you, you're gonna be you're gonna be kind when of on the outside at, looking in in ten years. Working yes. at the emoji I, factory. I, I am interested to see how that works because. Uh, Emoji like, is part a placeholder me, for, well, for yeah, that culture part, in general. Part of me feels I don't like, just mean there's going to be poop symbols in your... In your but there in probably your will be. There yeah, probably will be as well, yeah. yeah. See, p- part of me feels like as as a... If we're going to use generations as a thing, like as if it's an actual thing, which yeah. it's not. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I, I completely agree with you. We're all it, just it's, one, it's just one a mar- It's just a marketing term. It has <laughs> nothing to do with anything. No. That's not true. It's not just a marketing it, term. It's, I'm different from my parents, and they are different from their parents. Right, yeah, but, but what's the generation like? It's just an arbitrary cutoff. The cutoff is arbitrary, yeah. It, it, it's. I am interested to see because I feel like you know, most people our age are, are keyed into stuff that that younger people like in a way that's useful. Like I feel like I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't see like a twelve year old and be like, oh, kids would they sound so foreign to me? Like I'm like they <laughs> right. they say like oh I like X show and I'm like. I don't know what that show yeah. is, but like that's fine. I, I get like I, I understand you on a basic level. I know you're a, a child and you like different right. things. But they and, do seem really far now because now they are maybe well, not twelve, but fifteen year olds. The way they communicate and like, but how okay, you, that, but that doesn't seem that doesn't seem pictures. that that honestly doesn't seem that foreign to me. I mean, yeah. using AIM was like it's different with a smartphone. That that's why it's a generational difference between people who grew up with the internet and people who grew up with the internet on their. On I agree. Their I agree. It's different, like all times. Like uh, people I work with, you know, they talk about their kids, and I know that they have like cell phones, and they they have to restrict like device time, and it's, mm-hmm. it's different because like. When we were in high school, like, we had to go on the computer to talk to each other. Yeah. And now I can just, like, text anyone I want whenever I yeah. want. When you don't, when you And that's phone, a weird thing in high school. Can you, uh, can you stop texting me at, like, four in the morning? Because it's Bryce, really, I have, I, just, he, he just, it's I constant, like. I had a bad like, dream, Bryce, and I just need you to tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> By the way, I can do this anytime I want. Ha, yeah. ha, ha. Look, this is generalizing. But if you're a teenager and your phone dies, it's almost like being put in a black... It's almost like being put in solitary. It's like a black mm-hmm. box with no windows. Right. You're cut off. Yeah. So, like, yeah... Yeah, emoji, but I feel like that now, too. not so much different than texting with letters, but these things... Yeah, and we... And, and, I agree with what Bryce just said. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like right. we're, we're all We're like also, also hooked on the smartphones, yeah. but... But growing up with it fundamentally changes the way you interact with people. We're we're almost it's almost like we've adapted well, to smartphones. Well, but, but here's the thing: we don't we don't really know that yet. We don't know, we don't that, know yet. that. Yeah, I don't know it yet, but it, it's a it's a theory that holds a lot of weight and could very well turn out to be true. But they, but they say that for everything, also, yeah. and they turn out to be right about everything. We're no, fundamentally do different. we are we fundamentally different because from our parents? Yes. In what in so what true. respect? Like like communication, just just the way in which two people interact and have a conversation. Like, is We're it more different? Open with each other. My grandma doesn't like when people put pictures on Facebook of her without anybody telling her. And yeah, but is I that mean, is I don't that really like that either? And I'm well, yeah. that's generalizing. But but it, is that but, is that like a is that because we grew up with the internet or or it's just less scary a general? To us. But is it also just a general societal issue of like? What, it's, what it's, is and is not it's appropriate. It's going back to the horse and car thing. It's like there were people who didn't want to drive cars. They wanted to ride horses. Cars were dirty and loud and they were inefficient and they thought it was Unlike stupid. Unlike those horses that poop in the street. But a genera- But the generation that grew up in cars, especially the, the once they got to a point where you didn't have to crank them and shit, they would never look back. And the idea, and then they probably had like their grandma in the 1930s saying like, I don't want to get in that car. It makes me nauseous. It's loud. Yeah, but, but, but that the way you're talking about it makes it seem like Older generations cannot accept new no, things. No, it's not about and accepting that's not, or not and accepting. It's more about subtle differences in the way these. I'm not talking about superficial. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. They have weird little snowball effects on major societal changes. Again, going back to the cars. Sure, so but I don't okay necessarily with, think it's a you're complete more generation. You're more thing. comfortable being in a car, and I'm not just talking about oh, grandma's nauseous. She doesn't want to get in the car. I'm talking about oh, you know what? It's okay to get on the highway and drive six states across and settle there. That wasn't a thing before cars. Besides pioneers, you right. grew up, you stayed in the same town. It had oh, they the, had trains. There's ripple effects into these much bigger 
things, and I'm saying we can't. This is something we can't predict or talk about in one podcast. But what is the idea of growing up with a smartphone? How is that going to ripple into like? What is a 30, 40 year old? How are they going to? Do something different in their life that we wouldn't have done having grown up with smartphones. And yeah, yes, we, I know, we, we're and the we closest don't know. generation, so we're not the best example because you're right. There's there's blending. There's we're bleeding into each other. Yes, we do, but maybe people a little bit older. I think that doom and gloom, like oh my god, like these kids are growing up with smartphones. They're going to be dum dums. They don't know how to talk yeah, to no, each other. They're going to be sending yeah, poop emojis. They're they're going to be. They're, they're, they have chips I don't know if they'll be smarter than they us. They are. They I'm have, a pretty smart guy. We all just got into Mensa earlier. They may not have a chip in their brain. Maybe Five generation whole search engines, guys. <laughs> maybe Five. generation double Z. Will have chips in their brains, but more or less, Generation Double Z sounds like a fucking <laughs> badass, like movie or something. Yeah, I mean, think about how. We, well, they all have we long have beards. All, <laughs> we're all <laughs> geniuses. We're all geniuses. We have anything we want to know, we can find out in ten seconds on our smartphone. Which well, is I don't think that makes us geniuses. It, it gives us access. Knowledge yeah, is we have the knowledge. information, not knowledge, yeah. is at our fingertips. We have the knowledge, so that that I mean, it's there. It's it's better. They're, right. They might. So what if they can't add two plus two? They don't need to anymore. Well, so what if I don't know how to ride a horse? If I didn't know how to ride a horse in a certain context at a certain time a hundred years ago, yeah. you know, probably not New York City, but in a certain context, certain time a hundred years ago, that would be very detrimental. I would be less than for not being able to ride a horse. But I don't need to ride a fucking horse now. So maybe in two, three generations, they don't need to know what two plus two is. The computer will always be there to tell them. Mm, but it's well, diff- it's I don't diff- know if that's it's different because fundamentally, true. you know, if you strip everything away, the the further we get with technology, the more we get away from you can't strip everything away well, anymore. Math but, is a basic building block of maybe logic not intelligence, and but logic and understanding. Yes, <laughs> and also how computers operate. And if you're saying computers are going to be so prevalent, that you don't need to know how to ride a horse to ride a car for the or most do literally part, anything. I agree in your with day. you. I'm just leaving the door open for maybe that isn't the fundamental blocking. Maybe knowing how to read your Knowing how to ask Siri the question the right way is the fundamental... That is the 2 plus 2. Right, but someone has to build Siri. Someone has to make Siri better. Siri well, and, and you're, Siri. Yeah, but you, oh, Siri. So you're saying that the singularity has occurred. We're, we're I'm having... not saying any there. I'm saying but these that information are still has to be created and, put and these are things that places. could be happening not too many generations from here. Well, I mean, you know, and this, and this really comes back to the whole idea of alt-rock... And, yeah. and how, like, Nirvana really used to talk about this stuff. Like, Kurt Cobain you, was if, noted yeah. for being like, one day, man, we're not going to even know what 2 plus 2 is. We're going to ask Siri. And they're he like, was, who's Siri? He was all about bleeding edge, bleeding <laughs> yeah. edge technology. Yeah, you know? that's, I mean, what, uh, that's what... Um, uh, it smells like Teen smells Spirit, like Spirit is about. about. Yeah, I yeah. can't yeah. think of another people, Nirvana song. People think it's about a... Deodorant yeah. <laughs> spirit, and but it's no. not. You know, I didn't get teen that spirit. until maybe two years ago, maybe last year. Somebody explained to me that the the spirit, teen spirit, yeah. or the spirit is is the deodorant. I mm-hmm. never got that. I never That's, listened to that. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> You're done good. All right, I think thanks, we covered all, everything we can <laughs> about things alt called alt. alt. Well, we, we've said this before. Alt, uh, uh, this is alt, alt, alt news groups were a thing. Yeah, that was news, early internet. Also, we don't yeah. know. Did you guys? You see, Jack doesn't. Did you? When did you get internet? I got internet uh, the I think internet. I was in 8th grade, so that was probably 97. Yeah, I probably got something around 7th, 8th grade. So I remember news yeah. groups. I, I, I've been on news groups. I, I, I didn't really use them, but I I'd see, I around. saw them. And, you know, I had a friend who had, like, same age. Well, I'm a year older than you guys, I think. But, like, yeah, same like two age. Two years older than Dan, because Dan's a year oh, okay. younger than me. So, yeah. yeah, he's, like, maybe another year or two older than us but okay. he was very he's an old he, man I don't care yeah. what he thinks he, I'm a young man. his parents were very very early adopters like yeah. you know with old shitty computers and news groups were like the only thing yes. that you really like had like BBS message boards yeah BBS boards message things. boards yeah. and stuff and like that was I guess I, I totally understand now. Like yeah. message boards are like still a thing, but that was like a very yeah. well. Like Reddit is like sort Reddit of a is, message yeah. board, but it's as far removed yeah. from news groups as you. But could possibly but imagine. Be. I mean, I guess I guess it, it's weird to think of because if you imagine like Reddit is so such a large conversation with a massive group of people, and this yeah. would have been this this would have felt like a large conversation with a massive group of people, but like. How big were most of the news groups? Like they couldn't oh, they even couldn't the biggest ones couldn't have been that big like, and had yeah, that many that, people they're, they're constantly talking. Like talking. Like 1992 yeah. or something. Like the only people yeah. who had internet access were Star Trek fans. Were, well, <laughs> right. well, I was gonna say it's like academics and universities yeah, yeah. who are all Star, Star Trek, Trek fans, nerds. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I want to go back to another point. You're you're saying how how they were early adopters. That's why the whole idea of generational, uh, again, we have to use it in general because uh, it's it's not just how old you are. It is. It's it's how your parents are. It's 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 finance. I got it a little bit later than you guys, and even I got it fairly early in the grand scheme of things. They were right. Socioeconomically, a lot of people didn't really get the internet until even after the '90s, even into the 2000s. Mm -hmm. And then there's obviously if you go even lower down the the the, the, uh, the economic classes there's still a lot of people don't have it now uh and then and then once you do have it is it broadband is it smartphones is it mobile you know it, it, so that comes into play it also comes into not just money but if you know your parents could be rich but they might not be early adopters they might not be into that stuff so early adopters who are a little bit older would be more the next generation that's why i think that we guys are uh that's why you guys have this uh, seem to be a little bit more adverse to being considered separate from the next generation, but that's because we are a little bit more savvy. You know, I can c- certainly think of people my age who are a little less savvy, who are definitely going to have uh, be more far removed from the next generation. I just personally hate like the generational divide. Like, oh, Gen X is like this, and Millennials are like this. They feel like this. No, but it, I it, just can't it's stand still that. useful. No, I hate to do anything. I hate to generalize anything and say anything is concrete. Of course not. But right. It, but nothing exists in a vacuum. Everything bleeds into each other besides vacuums and, and blood. And blood. <laughs> blood exists in a vacuum and it bleeds into other blood. Yeah. But it, Ask any vampire, Jack. They will tell but you But I that. do think it's important, especially on a, po- a comedy podcast about the 90s, to raise these questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and we said this before in one of our test shows, but... Um, we have, we're going to have probably plenty, more than enough topics to go through, especially if you guys keep submitting them. Yes. But we're open to, to doing another topic again uh, and revisiting it because obviously sure. we can we can just keep talking. Yeah, we can keep so, talking so about things labeled all. So we can stop all talking day. about all. Well, you know, I think the conversation's run its course, but we might come back to it again. In fact, this is the second time we've had this topic. So. Yes. So here we go. Uh, 15 minutes and 8 seconds on the clock. What's next? New topic is going to be Dance Mix USA. And that was submitted also by Lynn Sokolow. Dance I have Mix no USA. idea what Dance I don't Mix know what USA that is. is, so we're going to Google I, it real quick. The first quick. thought that came to me was, now that's what I call yeah, music. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm uh, thinking. At the time of this recording, AV Club just released a uh, oral history like article jams. about it that I haven't read yet. But from just glancing at it, it looked like now that now yeah. that's what I call music started in the early 80s. I thought yeah. it was... I, thought it I think it was a British, it was a British thing. Se- it seems like it is also a lot like now that's what I call music. So, it's like a best of, like, a, you know, a, a jukebox of the, wait, the popular so hits of the day. That kind of blew my mind that now that I, I that's what even, I call music is older. I found the, the first... I'm looking at the, the listing of the first disc in the so what's, Dance Mix what's USA Dance series. USA? Uh, we got Let the Beat Hit Him by Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but it's probably the greatest name of all time <laughs> now what year did this come out this came out in 1993 the second say, this track more 80s and the 90s. second track classic 90s track gonna make you sweat parentheses everybody dance now by cnc oh, music yeah. factory no yep. idea that that was the name of the, everybody dance now was called oh, yeah. gonna make you sweat yeah. no idea oh hell yeah learning something new this is why i love knowledge and i love homework yeah this is actually it's I mean, I guess it's dance music specific. It seems a lot of like R and B. Dance remix. There's TLC. Salt and Pepper is on there. And by the way, they and, still uh, have a like functioning website that is like set. They have like apps for smartphones. DanceMixUSA.com. Dance Dance they have an app. Uh huh. DanceMixUSA. It's app, still huh? it's still going on. Huh. So they have not gone away. Oh, yeah. But uh, I guess yeah, it was. I mean, so this is this is. I mean, in general, this is just a a up to date compilation album so it's it, it is essentially like, it. like now that's what i call music or jock right. jams or right. or anything we like have that no personal I, connection to I, dance mix I, I want to play but i want to play a game dan stop looking at the okay. names of the songs. I, i've stopped looking at it i want you to name a band a uh, name of a group and a song that you think would fit in dance, in dance like mix a complete, USA. just make up a name and make up a song that would fit in dance remix usa oh uh, make make one up, off, make the top one my up head. off the top of my head okay but if you would have told me i would go i would actually here do this Give me a fake one. Get, read one for me, and I'll guess whether it's real or fake. Okay, hang on a second. Let's bring Bryce up play. one. Let's see what we got. Looking at Dance Mix USA Volume 4. Oh, it All doesn't, right. This website doesn't have the artist. Maybe you should just problem. give me the fake one. Then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on a second. 
I was going to say, if, if name like an actual one, I was going to say the real McCoy. Remember them? No. I would imagine yeah. they would have been on the air. Another night, another dream. Legally, that's all we can What's sing. funny is that song, to me, is like quintessential 90s yeah, dance absolutely. music. But the real McCoy sounds more like an alt-rock band. Yeah. yeah. Like, that okay. seems like it would be and they, like, they like, sound like shitty a, grunge. A, an indie rock band. Yeah. But that's such a weird name. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're the dance troupe. Yeah, we're the real McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now I've got a track listing here. So I'm going to okay. give you a real one and a fake one. You tell me which one's real, which all one's right. fake. Okay, we got... Set Your Soul by Planet Free or Set You Free by Planet Soul. Oh, that's 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 not fair. That's <laughs> Planet Soul. <laughs> it's got to be Planet F- oh, Planet Soul makes more. All right, I'll go with Planet Soul. It was Planet Soul. Is the you real free. one? Yeah, it's the real one. All right, here. I'm just going to make up one that I think is fake. Okay. G and E and the Coolie Cools. I'm just looking at the air. Jack, that's the fake sorry. one. That is the fake one, Jack. You do looking, not need to continue. You know what? I'm just going to make up fake bands by looking at things that are in my All right, let's do it. Right, uh, you, you got Couchy next? Couch in the couches. <laughs> <laughs> I love their hit, Change in the Couch Cushions. All right, I have a Brycey Bryce. <laughs> oh, which one is going to be real? <laughs> With right. their hit single, Wearing Headphones. <laughs> Uh, okay, hold on. I'm I'm gonna find I'm gonna find something. Okay, uh, Bryce is gonna do another real and a fake, okay. so we'll we'll figure that out. Meanwhile, we're gonna listen to uh, Ironing Board and their hit track. <laughs> I'm in the corner of the apartment we're in right now. <laughs> I love that song, especially the uh, the All right. I especially the love acoustic the, uh, remix. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, we got two here. We got one. Uh, the band is called Stereo Fix. The song okay. is called Floor on Fire. Okay. Mm. Okay. And we have another one. The band is called Max with two X's. Ooh, that sounds 90s. And the song is called Get Away. Oh, that's a tough one. Man. I'm going to go with Max is the real one. I'm also going to say Max is the real one. You are both correct. Ah, uh, that was a good song. That was, was a tough stereo one. fix? Stereo, <laughs> stereo fix. Floor on Fire. All right, I'm going to do it right but, now. But, I mean, if you look at a lot of these, these a lot of these are like actual, like, Stuff I've heard from some of them stuff I I've heard before, or something that like like I know CNC Music Factory. That's, yeah, that's a real one. Yeah, or I mean, uh, Bucketheads, Montel Jordan. This is how we do it. This is how we legally. This is all we can do. <laughs> this is how nope. we avoid copyright. That's exactly <laughs> right. There you go. We all don't right. want Mont- Montel Jordan's lawyers. Right, did you, you very, guys very look at Volume Five? No, I no. didn't. All right, so I'm going to do one from Volume Five. I'm going to give you a real one. I mean, I know it. By, I know the track listing by heart. Uh, yeah, but not, that was the only one I had growing up. Fair. Volume Five. Everybody, okay, let's back in, guys, back in the '90s. If you didn't grow up in the '90s, I'm just gonna tell you right now. Everybody had Dance, Dance with USA, USA Volume Five. Five, starting off with these songs. What do you got? Okay, you're doing a real and a fake, I'm right? Doing We're doing the fake. game. Okay. <laughs> it's it's loud in here. I T Z loud in here by Tommy Song. Tommy Song. Yeah, okay. Just spelled exactly as oof, how oof. it sounds. Or if Madonna calls by Junior Vasquez. Huh. The second one, if Madonna calls. Is this the real one or yeah, the fake the one? I think the first one's the real one. So one of you I think the, I think the first one is the real one, but I want to pick the second one because I feel like it's Madonna calls is if Madonna calls I feel is like too the, the obvious. ITZ is very nineties. You know, all right. That's because I know the nineties very well. And I knew to put that Z on the end. Yeah. If Madonna calls, Damn you. Yeah, ah! yeah. I was just like, it. it what that was would, the fake band? That's why that you chose Tommy Song. Tommy Song. <laughs> what was the I, other? Uh, what was? I, I thought I knew Tommy Song. Knew okay, hold on. I, I got Tommy two now. I got. Uh, and I swapped out <laughs> June for Song. Damn it. Moe's haircut. What was the thing you did in that one? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the two. Oh, that's the our two. Simpsons podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're, this, 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 nobody cares. This is so totally separate. <laughs> we got a totally different crowd. Probably, maybe, we hope. <laughs> we lost them around the... Uh, 90s kids. Around uh, the... Uh, 90s kids, am I right? Click, yeah, 90s kids. Like if you, like if you remember this. <laughs> it means you grew up in the 90s, Ninja Turtles. Uh, how do you guys feel about dance music in general? Uh, well, what do you mean by dance music? Because this music is another you one. Can dance to? Oh, I'm against it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care for dancing. Uh, I actually, my wife likes to dance, and therefore I I, I like to dance with her. So well, I ser- enjoy ser- music answer. to dance to. I, I I'm fine with dancing. It's not really my thing. I'll do it if I have to. It's funny to equate like, dancing with dance music because I don't. I, I wouldn't I don't, listen I don't, to I dance dancing music. with like weddings and like parties. See, I don't. I, see, I dance so rarely that I just consider right. dance music like the upbeat. music. Music I want to listen to when I'm in that mood on my iPhone. 
But I think a lot of people, like, dance music as an overall kind of broad thing would probably encompass, like, house music like or yeah. trance, trance, trance music. Trance. Really so like, like EDM music, it, yeah. Yeah, which EDM. I love sitting and listening to. I actually, actually say I, really, I listen to it all the time. It's because you can kind of... Not you, you can, can zone, forget about you can it. Zone out. Yeah. You it, it's better to like, I listen to a lot of dead mouse, a lot of Skrillex. It's better for that kind of music to just envelop you as opposed to like a this, lyric, chorus yeah. lyric. Well this drive it drives my wife crazy. Like I'll listen to like like Dead Mouse and it's loud and it can be like thumping bass and like really grating and like you know, like the beat drops is like Yeah, yeah. And she's like, This is like tormenting me. I cannot listen to this. And it calms me yeah, actually. No, I, I don't know what that I means for me. Agree. Um, I, there's one album in particular I, I play that just everybody hates like, either my girlfriend who I live with or my roommates in college they were always like yeah. please turn that off and it was like an album of remixes of The Faint oh yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that album and it was like remixes of their songs yeah. and, I, and it was just you know, like you said there was a lot of weird shit going on it was very repetitive and I yeah. could just listen to it all day yeah I, I feel the same way not about um, that album but yeah. other albums it's so it's funny how did we say Dance Mix USA was a British thing before because no. it has now, USA Dance in the Mix title USA. now, now, now that's, that's what, what I call music, music I believe was a, started oh. as a British oh so was Dance Mix USA the, like the US ripoff Nah, I, well, maybe. Well, I mean, you know, th- this is the thing. Like, when the same company? This is a question I have. When did when did music compilations like of thing? modern day music become a thing? Supposedly, it was with the original. Now, that's what I call music. Yeah, which was what I was trying to get out of at the very beginning yeah. of the conversation. Oh, okay. Is that it, that kind of blew my mind? To me, that was always that thing that came out when Britney Spears and Net and Sync became big, right. and it was just a compilation yeah. of right. shitty pop music. Mm-hmm. But apparently, it came out twenty years earlier in England. And it was mm-hmm. like a genuine, like, hey, we want to give you the biggest hits all at once. Right. Wait a minute. So in England, now that's what I call music, came out in like the 70s? Oh, early uh, Again, I just scanned this, this article that just came out at the time of this recording on AV Club. Uh-huh. It's an oral history of now that's what I call it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I haven't read it yet, but it seems I, like it'll I be I do recall it being, yeah, being much older than, than it was here. Yeah, like the yeah, one yeah. that was here... Yeah, was the like first their, one was definitely like you know, Britney Spears was on the first or one. whatever. Yeah, yeah. and or like in sync. And, and what's funny is now there's like sixty, and to me that kind of like waters it down. Like if you have something, 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 edition fifty seven, right. then it should be some kind of anal porn. <laughs> Whoa, oh. that came out of nowhere. No, seriously, what else? What, what else has fifty seven? What else has part fifty seven in it? What edition yeah. fifty seven? That's Twilight weird. Saga, modern day <laughs> anal porn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that they're all called now. That's what I call music because yes, 1983 was them. What they should call them them. What that's was, what we called music. <laughs> what, so we go back and, and yeah, retroactively name every it. Every year they rename the previous yeah. now into them, and only <laughs> what, this. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Now. Can you can you go back to that then? real quick? Go, the, go jump jump back now. Uh, Soon. Can, do you guys see the part where there's a uh, a pig became a mascot at, for the series? The second paragraph. That was the original. That was the original album cover. Was this weird? The series took its name from a 1920s advertising poster for Danish bacon. Featuring a pig saying, "Now that's what I call music." As it listened to a chicken singing. Wait, was so was, interesting. Was that bacon ad the first time somebody said, "That's what I call blank"? I don't know. Or was, I'm assuming they just that ad was taken from the parlance of the day. Everybody was saying, "That's what I call." But th- that's what I wanted to bring up about the now that that's what I call music. Sure, 1980s, 1970s England. I could see that being a, a verifiable title. But 1998 America. Now that's what I call music. Always yeah. just seemed like such an antiqu- antiquated, like weird, dated mm. phrase. Does. Can we go back to this advertising poster? So it was for Danish bacon, and the pig mm-hmm. is saying, now that's what I call music in response to a chicken singing. What does that mean? I, again, I saw We're this, I've actually pig, seen the picture. I'll show right? So the pig should be like, oh shit, I'm going to get eaten. He doesn't know that. The chicken is the harbinger of that, that pig's demise. Yeah. He should say, now that's what I call Depressing. a death call. Yeah. yeah. Here's the album cover. We're looking it up okay. on a big screen. A dirge. Okay, so the, the pig has like Devo dirge. glasses on and looks super uh, no, super eighties. I'm trying to find uh, this is now. There, there, right, right in the bottom. Yeah, there, this is, there you this go. Is it. Yeah, uh, and he's on a fez uh, between the eleventh Doctor like and uh, and this album cover. I guess yeah. it is a bucket. Uh, it could be a fez. It's a chicken on a bucket. Make, make singing your joke. To a make pig, your joke. And it says, "Now that's what I call music." All right, I, don't I would really, buy that bacon. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, I, this, if anything, this wants me to want bacon more than it wants me to have. Look at that pig. Uh, like, it's a very realistic looking pig, and it does not make me want to eat is. a pig. It kind of makes me want chicken, to be honest. Yeah, the or chicken like looks egg. more, the chicken looks better. Yeah. I would eat the chicken before I'd eat that pig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've got three minutes left of the clock. Do we want to just yeah, do, uh, one do more. a quick Let's take? Let's do another, do another one. Do our patented quick takes? We're doing a quick take on the next topic. And, uh, we're going to wrap it up with this. We're going to tie it into self-driving cars. <laughs> if we can. Dan- well, Dance Works USA, we're, we're going to listen to it in the self-driving cars. In our so virtual we're, we're reality done. backseat. That's right. While we're homeless. 
and we don't understand the right. new generation. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're, we're homeless and driving around in a car, because we just couldn't take the kids. Yep. So we've got two minutes and 53 seconds left on the clock. Our topic is AOL. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure we can squeeze this in into two minutes plus. Um, here, here here's, why don't we just talk very briefly. <laughs> just do that sound for two minutes. I never had AOL. Uh, really? I never did either. Do you have Prodigy and Netscape. CompuServe? Well, we oh, used Netscape right. as the browser. I don't remember. What we, so yeah. how did you actually connect to the internet? Because for a lot, I don't know. Like for a, we'll briefly talk about this. Uh, I think a lot of people thought America Online was the internet. Right. It was very confusing when AOL first came out, and that's why it was so big. It yeah. was like, yeah. oh, we'll connect you to the internet, and we're America Online. Yeah, you've got mail. Was to people was just email. I just knew right, we had right. a we, we we had a yeah. modem that we connected with. I don't remember anything about it you and your your smarts and you're just your, a kid your fancy alt dot news yeah, groups yep. that aol sucks well we yeah I, I never had aol and i was always jealous of people who had aol because they had instant messenger and this was before right. like aim wasn't a thing that you could get no, outside I, of aol not not until for well a long into the time 2000s, yeah. yeah and so i remember it's maybe sometime in high school aim became available for download to that that like for non AOL computers, right? And I was like, "This is amazing." Now I can talk. Now with I people. can talk to my yeah, bro. To my me, bros. to me, AIM was the internet. That was the, if it, like it cost my mom a lot of money. AIM was the internet, or AOL was the internet. AIM. Uh, okay. Like that was pretty much what I used it for was instant messaging, I, browsing, and, and games. And were, pornography. Were and pornography. We all use pornography. Actually, I feel like that came very late. I feel, I feel mm-hmm. like I, it was like one of those revelations. Like you could use that for that. <laughs> <laughs> it never really occurred to me right away, but. Yeah. Um, we were still finding boxes of porn in the woods at that point. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. I know. I was still so. using... Uh, Hell yeah. Let's yeah. talk good about old, that good for the old last forest minute of the porn. podcast. Man. Who's leaving all this porn out in the forest? Uh, you Serial know, killers? I guess. Uh, Is it, oh, wait a minute. Do you fairy, think that, fairy godfathers. Do you think serial killers are luring children out to the forest with the promise of boxes of pornography? I think some of them are. Well, but, I think but, some of them but, might be, too. I want to but we all survived, all so clearly they weren't killing any of them did we all survive pour one out for my bro little bobby <laughs> who died for trying to get some porn in the woods he's like i found a box of porn in the woods oh no a hatchet and the hatchet faced murderer killed him then and there Wait, oh my hatchet god faced murderer <laughs> yep is his face the shape of a hatchet his face yep. wasn't the hatchet that yeah. he killed little so bobby he just with. like headbutted him with his yeah no no, no he has a hatchet but he, his face uh, his he face actually off. he uses he uses a gun um. He does. It's a gun so, that shoots little hatchets. So hat, though. Hatchet man shoots shoots right. his victims. Yeah. Right. Well, it's just he's a hatchet faced murderer. Okay. Right. He's just his face looks like he a was hatchet. And the reason he's so angry, yeah, yeah, that's why he's so yeah. angry, is because uh, and that's why he uses porn because I'll never look as pretty as these models, right? And they'll never want to be with old hatchet face McGee. His last name was McGee, right. uh, and that's why he and killed he, all the children. And he didn't have AOL. And <laughs> this is the this only is, way he could connect with people. This breaks my heart to say it, but we are out of time, boys. Okay, that is it. So sixty minutes are up. You guys. Guys know that I love my homework. Uh, this is why this yes. is my favorite part of the show. What have we learned? What have we learned today? Bryce, what have you learned today? What have you learned oh, man. on this uh, episode of the show? I have learned that Jack really wants to talk about the future and self-driving cars. On my homework. nostalgic 90s podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and really still believes in generations. And I, I, I found that uh, Dan and I have a lot in common about our, yeah. our feelings about things. All right. Dan, what have you learned? Uh, I have learned that you could get on the internet without AOL if you had a modem and some sort of secret connections that Bryce had when he was a child. Money. Uh, we, <laughs> oh, of course, we, the we, biggest we, secret connection. We, we live next door to Al Gore. I so. see, that makes sense. Uh, I learned that, um, that, uh, the, what was the name of that band? Susie, not Susie Sue, there was another one. I don't remember Tina, Couchy Tina? Couch and the Couches. Yeah, well, Susie I, and the Banshees. Well, I learned that, that, uh, Couchy Couch is not a real band, and I no, learned it's some, definitely not. Oh, I learned that, uh, Everybody Dance Now is actually called, uh, it's Gonna Make You Sweat. Gonna Make You Sweat. Up. Yep, sweat, sweat it up, I'm sorry. So I, I didn't quite learn anything this time. No, <laughs> it doesn't. You need to do your homework, Jack. And with that. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, guys. If you want more content from We Studios, uh, you can check us out at WePodcast.com. We have a Simpsons theme podcast. Uh, yep, going worst strong. episode ever. Uh, worst episode ever. We've, we'll, we'll have more episodes of 90th Percentile as, as we record them. Yep. Uh, and if we got a couple of commentaries out for our commentary series, Sync Points. Yes. Uh, you can check all those things Premium out. Premium movie commentaries, yeah. $2 each. We got two so far. Uh, Bryce uh, has got something. He's, he's He needs to plug, right? Oh, uh, yeah. A web uh, I have a sorts? web series coming out that I An AOL that I series? Cut. <laughs> AOL series. I think that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I worked on a series called Seeking Sublet. It's dropping, uh, I think, this week or a couple weeks well, sometime we, soon. We so check out SeekingSublet.com. So just Google it. Yeah. Just Google Seeking and, uh, Sublet. And, you know, watch and Like Sublet, enjoy like it. S-U-B-L-E-T? Or S-U-B-L-E-T. Or no extra T-E on the end? Nope, nope. All right. Um, nope, check that out. French uh, you can watch the television show I work on, Blue Bloods. Uh, 
if you're a Nielsen person, if you're a Nielsen, <laughs> if you're a Nielsen viewer, family, please, check please it out. do watch it. If, uh, if you're not, I guess stream it on Netflix and keep me employed. Uh, All right. And uh, where's your Twitter handle? Uh, poorly conveyed. All right. At so poorly conveyed. Okay, now is that conveyed uh, like like a convey like C O N V E X or just like it was poorly conveyed? Did you poorly conveyed. It's a, it's your a Twitter past tense of convey. Okay. okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And uh, I thought you conveyed that quite well. Actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. In an ironic twist. And Dan, what's your it's Twitter? The only handle? thing ever. Where can we find you, Dan? <laughs> I am at then Dan says I only tweet about wrestling. <laughs> there you go. I'm at Jackie No Breaks. I tweet about everything but wrestling. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you do want to support the show or support our, all of our shows, we studios in general, you can go to uh, our website. Go to our website, we podcast. Com, click through our Amazon links. Helps keep this show free. And please tell your friends if you like this show and give us reviews on iTunes. We're a brand new podcast. We really, really yeah, need yeah. that Yeah, we're stuff. definitely going to need some, some new iTunes reviews and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, but thank you just for listening. Just, just that alone. Uh, is just a huge, uh, huge compliment to us and, and very flattering. So thanks for listening. And a bigger compliment is if you continue listening. Yeah, that's a, that would be the best compliment. Um, and and the biggest compliment is if you email us and say, hey, you guys, you're pretty good. And and a compliment somewhere in that range would be to not tell other people how horrible we are and to not listen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Uh, please that's, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. And uh, I guess uh, that's it. Uh, uh, this is Jack. This is Dan. And we'll see you in another decade. <laughs>